In last class we discussed absorption, distribution and today we are discussing metabolism. So in absorption what we saw a drug which is lipid soluble, only lipid soluble drugs will cross uh, lipid, uh, lipid bilayer or plasma membrane thereby it gets absorbed from roots like GIT. So lipid soluble drugs will get absorbed from GI root. So this is lipid soluble drug. I am using green color for lipid soluble drug ok so this lipid soluble drug apart from GIT from by which route it can be given it can also be given by other routes like sublingual transdermal lipid soluble drug can get absorbed so once the drug is absorbed the drug reaches into systemic circulation into systemic circulation this is what absorption is again uh, if you see, uh, we can also have these uh, water soluble drugs. This color I am using for water soluble drugs. I will use this color for water soluble drugs. So, these water soluble drugs, after getting, they also gain entrance into systemic route by parenteral, like uh, subcutaneous IM or IV or whatever route. So the drug, this water soluble drug also enter into systemic circulation. Once into systemic circulation, we have finished with absorption. Once into systemic circulation, drug gets distributed. What was happening in distribution? Drug was getting distributed to various organs like heart and it may get distributed to various other organs like skeletal muscle or fat or, and also our kidney. Similarly, lipid soluble drug also undergoes the same. It also gets distributed to muscle, fat and this also reaches kidney. At kidney, what will happen to water soluble drugs? The drug gets filtered into uh, renal tubules and after getting filtered, uh, because it is water soluble, it does not get reabsorbed because it cannot cross lipid membrane. Hence, it gets excreted. So, water soluble drug gets excreted after reaching kidney. But what will happen to lipid soluble drug? So, this lipid soluble drug, it also gets filtered through um, glomerulus into renal tubules. After getting filtered, because it is lipid soluble, it gets reabsorbed. Once it gets reabsorbed, again it enters into systemic circulation. So, if you see this green color, uh, this lipid soluble drug, there is no practically possible way for it to get excreted. So, you need something to convert this lipid soluble drug into water soluble drug. This something is our liver. What liver does? Liver converts this lipid soluble drug into water soluble drug. So, what liver is doing? It is converting this lipid soluble drug into water soluble drug into water soluble drug. So this process conversion of lipid soluble to water soluble is nothing but our metabolism, metabolism or biotransformation of drugs. So we will see what biotransformation is. Biotransformation preferable term metabolism can also be used you can also use metabolism here drugs are metabolized to more polar products drugs are metabolized to polar products which are water soluble and it gets excreted into urine so this is the process of biotransformation so what will happen to the activity of the drug whether activity is retained or lost consider this is active drug after getting biotransformed in liver, the active drug can get converted into inactive metabolite. So this happens for most, for most drugs, this is the case. Most drugs gets inactivated after biotransformation. Next one more case can be the drug is active and after biotransformation it gets converted to active metabolite. See, drug is also active and its metabolite is also active. Example, allopurinol. Allopurinol is active. 
its metabolite alloxanthin is also active similarly diazepam is active its metabolized its metabolite desmethyl diazepam or oxazepam is active similarly codeine is active and its metabolite is morphine is also active one more example is primidone it is also active and its metabolite phenobarbitone or phenylethyl malonamide both are active so these are active drugs getting converted into active metabolite one more case can be the drug is active and after getting bio transformation it may produce a toxic metabolite example paracetamol is active and its metabolite n acetyl para benzoquinone amine NPQI is toxic metabolite next so this is what will happen to active drug get may get converted to inactive or it may get converted to active metabolite or it may get converted to toxic metabolite one more case can be the drug is inactive but it may get converted to active metabolite after getting bio transformation in the liver such drugs are known as pro drugs why we need to have pro drugs because uh, because the drug is inactive hence it is more stable the drug is getting bio transformed inside the body hence the side effects are less so it is a better drug compared to active drugs questions have been asked which are the pro drugs which are the pro drugs hence we should know uh, a few examples of pro drugs which are asked or which are going to be asked in exams to remember these examples you need to know first thing you need to remember you know ac inhibitors example of ac inhibitor enalapril this enalapril is inactive correct after getting metabolized into the liver it will produce enalaprilat enalaprilat this enalaprilat is active similarly fosinopril is another ac inhibitor it is also inactive it gets converted into fosinoprilat again active metabolite fosinopril similarly other examples are perindopril quinapril ramipril trandolapril imidapril all ac inhibitors what you have to remember is this dictum all ACE inhibitors are pro drugs except except which except to capless captopril lisinopril so captopril and lisinopril are themselves active but remaining ACE inhibitors are inactive so if you remember all ac inhibitors are pro drugs you can remember pro drugs let's see pro drugs a few examples to remember pro drugs what i should what you should remember you should remember all ac inhibitors are pro drugs so by simply using this all instead of a double l i have used double a l by using this uh, dictum all ac inhibitors are pro drugs we can remember Uh, most important pro drugs for the purpose of exam see all a4 alpha methyl dopa acyclovir and levodopa ac inhibitors ac inhibitors like enalapril and c4 cyclophosphamide one more c for clopidogrel pro proguanil prednisolone drugs dipivaprin and apart from these you can remember bsf bsf means border security force you can remember bsf bsf stands for bicampicillin bitolterol sulfasalazine salindac and 5 fluorouracil 
so what i said in definition of pro drugs in definition of pro drugs i said these drugs are inactive and their metabolite is active and their metabolite is active if you see alpha methyl dopa alpha methyl dopa is inactive its metabolite is alpha methyl norepinephrine similarly acyclovir is inactive but after getting by transformed into liver it will produce acyclovir triphosphate acyclovir triphosphate this is active metabolite levodopa gets converted into body into dopamine correct similarly ac inhibitors i already discussed in al april getting converted to in al april add fosinopril fosinopril add similarly many all uh, all ac inhibitors except to capless captopril and lisinopril are not pro drugs cyclophosphamide gets converted to aldophosphamide or phosphoramide mustard phosphoramide mustard is again converted to acrolein this acrolein is a toxic metabolite here you can see cyclophosphamide is inactive phosphoramide mustard is its active metabolite by that we are getting toxic metabolite also similarly prednisone prednisolone dpvefrin epinephrine bicampicillin ampicillin salindac its uh, sulfide metabolite 5 fluorouracil fluorouridine monophosphate so all these are inactive and their active metabolite is produced